Hello everybody and welcome to another RCT2 hacking tutorial. Uh, last time we did a scream and swing ride which you can see to the left there and today we are going to do this ride right in front of us, the uh, fun time rides Star Flyer. Uh, this is probably the most complicated ride we've done so far. So if this is your first uh, hacking tutorial in my series, I suggest you may go watch some of the other ones first just to uh, get familiar with some of the techniques that we're going to use. Uh, we'll still go as we always do step by step through and uh, look at everything uh, that put, makes this uh, what it is. Um, as with a lot of hacks, and I've said this on every, on all the other videos too, you can do hacks in a number of different ways. So this is not the only way that we can do it. The underground control track, which I'm going to show you, will work, you know, exactly if if you re if you replicate this as it is, but it also takes up a ton of space. Uh, for example, here it is. This blue track down here is our control track for the ride. So if you don't have that much space, you can create your own custom uh, control track. You'll just have to fiddle around with the timing and everything to make sure that it lines up. The challenge with this one and what makes this so difficult is this is the first one where it matters how long the control track is. For some of these other rides, like our uh, two by two uh, spinning ride here or the condor ride any of those in particular The control track could really be as long as it wants because that just determines the ride cycle We don't really care where the ride stops it can stop where this car might be on the other side the next time and So forth and that's not an issue or with the shuttle uh, rides like the screw and swing here the swinging ship or the disco those all start and end at the same spot and go back and forth through the station. So it's not a big deal. This one is a big deal because we're going on a continuous enclosed circuit. So we need to make sure that the track below this guy matches the track above the invisible one that this ride is taking right now. It's hard to do that exactly. And it takes a lot of trial and error, which is why the track underneath looks pretty wonky. Uh, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks as far as getting that correct, but that is one of the things to consider as you go forward in building these. So one of the things, or a couple of things that makes this one special as compared to a lot of the ones that I've seen elsewhere. So ours has uh, car, cars that are spaced out, so it's a little more natural looking. Ours will go up, down about three quarters of the way, back up again, and then all the way down again. So it has a, light, a little bit longer ride cycle and more matches kind of what the real thing does. Yes, the real thing does go up and down even more than that. But for the purposes of our tutorial here, this is what we're going to have. The other caveat with this one is that over time, over multiple hours of this thing cycling, this will get off sequence and it will eventually break. Now, I've gotten this as close as I can possibly get it. But that's not to say that it won't eventually break and you'll have to reset it. The nice thing is the way that we're doing this hack is it set it and forget it. You don't have to do any additional work for it. You can just set it and let it go. So we're going to look at sort of three different things here. Um, we're going to look at the splitting portion to put the trains back together. We'll look at the tower itself and then we'll look at this fun kind of mess that's underground. So first of all, let's make some stuff visible again, just so you can kind of see what we're working with here. So the first thing we want to look at is our splitting track. I've already color coded this to make it a little bit easier for us to follow. If you remember back to our swing ride, this guy here, I showed an alternate method for splitting these vehicles apart that uh, if you used not the custom vehicles that we had here, and that was one of these um, pieces of track, which I call a splitting tree. Uh, basically, you're going to send the full train up, you're going to split it into a bunch of parts, you're going to send it down and put them all back together slightly further apart. It's actually not that hard to build, even though it looks kind of complicated. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, so we're just going to go through and uh, hopefully make it relatively straightforward and easy to do. Um, but let's jump into it just uh, to get us started here. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is just check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just to make sure that we're looking at around the right amount of space, I don't want to shortchange us. 
on the end here. All right. So let us begin at this and to help us out further, we're going to make sure that this is at the same height. Uh, so this is at height two. And really the only reason I'm doing that is just to kind of help us out as we build, just to ensure that we're going to match kind of what's going on. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing is we will build our station as is. You can build it as, it's just got to be long enough to uh, hold the entire train and then you can put your entrance and your exit there. Now the whole train in this instance is uh, 18 cars. So we are going to use 18 in total, uh, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine splits. So we're going to split this thing into um, that many pieces and go from there. So we're going to get set up for this, and uh, what we're going to do is actually transfer to another piece of track. Uh, if you want to, if you're in the uh, tight spot as far as um, as far as rides go in your park this is something that you could delete later on um, as far as object savings go but i wouldn't necessarily recommend it i would just as soon leave it there in case you need to reset this um, just to make sure that you're um you're going to have the um the ability to make it right okay and and to reset it so this is a six by six pad and one of the things that you will note is that the station itself is one inward. So if we mark this pad, let's use something a little less in your face. If we mark this pad, that's how it will sit. Uh, you can place this station really anywhere that you want. Um, I just did it like this because the entrance and the exit are within the tile. So we can do our queue line right up to the actual ride restricted area. <clears throat> okay, so next up, we're going to make a lift hill here. So we've already sloped up. So we're going to come back here and we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we're going to level it off. So if you started at height two, that'll be height 10. Um, that's with the lift hill turned on. And now we'll pull the lift hill off. We're going to go back to our initial ride here, making sure that we have disable clearance checks checked. Turn on the lift hill and merge this in. So now we have our uh, original track here merged in. Um, part of the reason that we merge to another track in addition to being able to delete it is that we're just going to make this one invisible with null objects a little bit later so it's going to be easier to <clears throat> deal with and we don't have to worry about the actual trains dropping in, uh, in the visual space once we make everything invisible. We're going to change the swinging floorless. One train. And we're going to go up to 18 cars. Um, if you haven't done this before, go up to cheats the ride cheats and then check everything except for allow building track at invalid heights because that will help us not uh, mess with that a little bit later. <clears throat> okay, so now what we're going to do is build one, two, three, four. Let's get up here. We'll turn off our chain left from build one, two, three, four, and then we're going to add a brake. And that brake is at four miles per hour. This is what lets us set and forget a little bit later. So we're going to time this just right, which is what all this kind of fluff turn track is up here. So that that all the excuse me, all this turn track here gets the train to just the right speed when it hits this splitting track that it will split into the right parts and come back together. Doesn't matter what this lift hill speed is, so long as this brake is here, it will take care of it. So off of that brake, you're going to turn left, two rights two lefts, and these are the medium sized corner. Then we'll go to the large corner one, and we'll do one, two more, turn the corner again, <clears throat> and now we get on to our straightaway here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, slope up, and one. <clears throat> so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, slope up, and one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Done. Okay, so now we do this splitting part. So this happens on two different elevations, and it's actually relatively straightforward. So what we're going to do is go in here and build these reverse merges, and then merge everything back together. So we're going to start all the way down here at the first one, which is nine down. Uh, it's actually number three on the line of straight track that you're going to delete. So 
Well, one, two, three. We will start by deleting this one right here. As we said before, when you do a reverse merge, when you want to go into the switch, back it up and then switch out, you build the exit first and then you build the entrance. So we deleted this piece. We're going to build a turn piece right here. And then we're going to go ahead and set this up by doing a quick slope down, level it out. And then we're going to put some brakes here at nine miles per hour right here at nine miles per hour. And then we'll slope back up just to Okay, so that's your first straight section, and then we'll come back in here, right click on this one, and then we'll build that in when we're ready. But just to save us some time, we're going to do this first and build all of these individually. So you're going to delete your next straight piece and then copy the same thing. No break this time, so this is just straight track. That's split two. Split three. Oops, I'm gonna split four. Split five. Six. Seven. Eight. And nine. So now this should match this guy right here, where we have our slope down, flat, then slope up on the other side. The break is on the first one, and the first one only. Let's uh, actually go through while we're looking at this, and let's make this just a nice solid color. Or it's a different color, just to help us see what we're doing here. A little better, maybe not red. Okay, so anyway, we've finished all of those, so now we're going to go back through here and we're going to build all these straight pieces. So you'll click on the number two straight section here, build a straight piece. It's automatically going to give you a curve. Um, just because it thinks we're continuing this curve. Uh, so you'll have to select the straight piece again each of the times. But just do that and build all the way up through. All right, so that's part one of this split. So now what we're going to do is create another split. So you can see here, let's take a look at this first one. We will back the train up down over this yellow break, and then the train will, in its various pieces, will go up this little slope here. And then we'll come out and split to a lower level and an upper level. So what we will do is go through and build this whole lower level. And then we'll come back through and build the whole upper level. <clears throat> so the lower level is one, two, and three straight pieces and a level at the bottom. So what we'll do, is we're going to go back through here. And we're going to delete the slope up. Let's just go through and delete all these ahead of time. Okay. We said it was three down and then a level at that point. If we look over here, we're at seven. That's correct. You can see too that it's one, two flat pieces then a tight curve here and it comes back together. At this point, we're just looking at compactness. So this is something that I've just derived ahead of time. So not to worry if this is your, if you're kind of worried about what we're doing in here, um, just kind of follow it exactly and it will turn out. If you have space considerations, kind of once you figure out how these splits are done, then you can go kind of do your own thing with it. So we're gonna go through and build this whole thing Basically adding two slow pieces, one level piece, two flats, and a curve. And the nice thing is they are all the same. So if one looks a little bit off or it doesn't line up, then you know you've done something wrong. Okay. 
Now we'll go through here on this curve on the bottom. Now all of these are merging back together. Um, so we're gonna do a straight piece again, just like we did before. And there you have it. So that's our lower level. Now we gotta go back up here and put back these slopes which we removed earlier. This is one of the common things that I forget to do later on. So don't forget to go back, otherwise you'll get a little bit of error. Okay, so that is our lower level. So now let's build our upper level, which uh, involves us removing all of the um, slope out to flat pieces here as we backed in. So you can kind of follow the lead here for clarity. Let's uh, just so you can see, because I know they're a little bit blue. These are the pieces that we're removing. Go through and remove all of these. It's a little messy, so don't be afraid to paint things different colors if your eyes are crossing a little bit. Back to what it should be. Okay, so all those are gone now. Oop. And we will go back through here and take a look at these. So the first one is going to be just slightly different, but it's uh, more or less the same. So one, two, three, and a big turn. And you can see the other ones here are also the same. One, two, three, and a medium turn. So let's go back through here. So we'll start with uh, number one down here. This is the one that had the break. So don't remember or don't forget to turn off the break. And we're going to go one, two, three, and a tight turn. One, two, three, and a tight turn. One, two, three, and a tight turn. Two, three, tight turn. Okay, this is the last one here. So this is one, two, three, and a large turn because this one is our control piece. So this is car number one that will be on this track. And we're splitting this one off separately because it is going to head underground and kind of do its own thing. Uh, actually, it's gonna turn out just based on the weighting of the trains uh, that this one is gonna carry two of the vehicles. Um, so vehicle one and vehicle two. Not a big deal. We just accommodated for that in the the overall design, uh, so we just kind of go with it. <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to go back up here to the upper level and build all these straight pieces here to connect all these together, and then we're going to go back to our split here and we're going to build back these slope to flat pieces. Three, number four. Five, seven, eight, and nine. So <clears throat> there you have it. That's a splitting tree. So now what we need to do is put everybody back together. We've already put the upper and lower level back together. That's all these curves coming together. So now we need to get everybody spaced properly. So we're going to look at this lower level, and we have one, two, a tight curve, and an S bend. So let's go ahead and take care of that. One, two, a medium curve, and an S bend to the left. So you can see that right here. On the upper level, we're gonna have a medium curve to the left, one, two, two mediums, one, two. And then we're gonna drop down to the same level. So let's just go ahead and look over here as we do it. Left turn, one, two, Two right hand turns, one, two, slope, one fully sloped, level, one, two, three. That should have merged us now with that S bend, which it has. So we will go ahead and um, get ready to merge into the rest of the track. So let's go ahead and slope once more. We're going to go one, two, three at the slope, one, two, three. We're going to level it out. 
left and then right and then we are going to actually leave it at that because we're going to get back to that in just a little bit <clears throat> okay so there we have it everything is coming together now we're going to take uh this straight section here or the the larger curve and then we're going to slope this down and then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and level it off. One, two, three, four, five, six, and level it off. This should be at two, which it is. Medium left hand corner, two straight pieces, two medium rights, two more straight pieces, and this bent to the right, a straight piece, and a slope down. We're going to leave it at that. Actually, what we're going to do is temporarily here, we're going to flatten this out. And we're going to build four corners just like that because that's going to let us test this. So let's throw this guy into um, boat higher mode, which lock operating limits. Okay. Not letting me select. Cool operating mode. There it is. I just didn't have it checked and I was blind. So we're going to go boat higher mode for this guy here. And let's test this out. We had enough space in here earlier to get all those trains. There we go. Okay, so the eventual speed on this guy is 23 miles per hour. So the lift hill is actually 22. So we can go through here and go ahead and increase this up to 22. Because our brake is going to take care of that. Just for visual purposes, we're going to build some straight bits here so you can kind of see how this all comes together. Speed up our time. So let's watch this break apart here. It will slope up and level off quite nicely. Now we're going to watch it do its thing. That other break will do its job there to split these further. Now everybody's apart except for the first two cars, and now we're going to put them together slightly spaced further apart. And there we go. That's our whole train there, plus our two underneath. So let's go back and get rid of this guy. Get rid of all these guys. <clears throat> and before it crashes, we're going to close this. Done. Okay, so now let's go back and build our tower. Tower is the next step. So let's make this one visible. So here is the tower. Um, I've put together some colored markings just to kind of help us out a little bit. And there we go. So we're going to start with this guy right here. And we are going to build this tower with another suspended swinging coaster. So this one starts at 2, that same level before. We're going to raise this up. Let's turn this on so we can see it. At 2, it's a flat corner. It is going in the clockwise direction. <clears throat> okay. So now... I will post the uh, information for this in the uh, description for the video just so you can follow along if you want to do this same one. If you want to make your own custom uh, tower, then go for it. Um, you, can, you can certainly do that. But this one is recreating this exactly. I've got this written down ahead of time just to help us out. So starting here, which is on this corner in relation to the other the set here almost kind of the opposite corner through the station going in a clockwise direction we're going to go three flat like that <clears throat> and then we're going to go up helix and we're going to do 28 of these bad boys 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. I lost count. Uh, so disable clearance checks and disable support limits. Do that before you count so then you don't throw yourself off. Just because I want to make sure it's right. We've got three flat pieces, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So that is a 28. You can see we are um, parallel to the splitting tree over here. Now we're going to go flat again. We're going to do three more. 1, 2, 3. And now we will go 13 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. If you're doing this yourself, you're going to want to make sure that you don't merge any accidentally. Uh, if you can't select anything here, it means you've accidentally merged it. Just don't worry about it and delete it and just try again. That's why some of this is a little bit wonky. It definitely looks messy and it's going to take a little bit of cross-eyed looking at it to make sure you get it right. Okay, so we went 13 down, we're going to go a single one flat, and then we're going to go up again. We're going to go up 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now we're going to go one flat again, and now we're going to drop. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. Stop at 25. Now I want this to be a short approach or a slow approach to the bottom as it slows down. So that's why we didn't just fully go down helix into the bottom. So we're going to level this out here and we're going to go two flat, one, two, one down, two more flat, and then one down. Now we are connected again with our straight section. So there you have it. That's the tower. We went with the 6x6 six six because we have the quarter helix pieces. Um, you can theoretically do it with the smaller 4x4. Four four. Uh, you just don't have quite as much play to do interesting things with it. So as far as uh, going up and down. So that said, we're going to go back to our little split piece here. And we're going to build a large one right here. And then we're going to go to the right and build a large helix down which is going to get us in line with our base piece here and we'll merge us in. So you can see that is the merged piece right there. We cannot build anything, which means we are merged together. All right, so upstairs is taken care of. So now we have to go downstairs. This is where it gets fun. And by fun, I mean a pain in the rear. Okay, so let's get rid of all this scenery. Let's get rid of all this pathway so we can see what we're dealing with down here. I use mini coaster track just because it's generic and it's easy. You can use whatever track you want. So we are, let's uh, shoot. Path. Okay. We are right here. As far as that goes. And we just want to make sure that we get this correct. We want to make sure we're starting in the right spot. So this is one, one, two, three, and four pieces. That looks like to be one off of where we sloped up over here. So if we call this our three by three here we will do by marking this with snow you can see our last station piece is on the middle our section of snow that's how we're going to do this You want to make sure the station is somewhere up underneath where the ride is going to load. I'm just being picky about this one to match what I've done just so that we, we can have it and 
accurate look at this ride. Okay, so we're down at negative six. Turn on ride height. We're going to start at this guy. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, negative six. So there we are. It's begun. And like we said earlier, let's get rid of our path here. Hard to see as we build up stuff. We have one, two, three, and four sections of uh, station. One, two, three, and four sections of station. Okay. So now comes the fun part. So this was figured out by a lot, a lot, a lot of trial and error. The way that I figured this out is I created kind of my approximate um, design for the underground section based on kind of the lengths that I thought it would take um, generally by doing some test runs. Uh, you need lift hill for the way up and you need brakes on the way down. Now you can put lift hill on the uh, pieces up here if you want. Uh, I prefer to do it down here. Uh, you can also use the booster track if you want, but just know that booster track is going to have a little bit of challenges. If you only have a couple of the cars down there, you will have to go higher than the speed that you actually want the ride to go. Um, so I'm going to go with the lift chain just because it is easy. So you can see here, we're using the chain kind of throughout this whole thing. And we have the um, the whole section here. Then we have a couple of corners. We've got a lot of chain lift. And then there's a couple of these that are marked here. This is the transition point between climbing and dropping. So we're going to transition into brakes. The brakes are set at 22 miles per hour. And then we're going to work our way all the way down. You'll see some gaps here, which we're going to get to here in a little bit. So what uh, what we start with here is a large corner out of the station uh, with the lift hill turned on. So make sure we turn on that lift hill. You're going to have that cheat enabled for lift hill on all pieces. So large corner is where we'll start. And I've written all this down ahead of time. So we're going to just kind of follow those things. Again, I will post this down below. So we'll start with 51 straight pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. Once again, this is a good time to remind you that if you don't have this kind of space to work with, then you can definitely change things up a little bit and uh, adjust to uh, make, make what you need to do. And actually, I see that I made a mistake. There's 52 here, so 52. Add your, sec add your one there. Okay. So now we will have one large corner. Uh, to this side, you can see that we're matching this one large corner to the left, uh, still with that chain lift engaged. I uh, want to make sure that we have that included. Okay, now we're going to do one straight piece here and then one medium curve. Again, a lot of this is going to seem wonky because it is, because a lot of this is just based on trial and error, minimal adjustment to get the ride to line up at the end. And I'll show you my trick to doing it when. Uh, we get to that point. Okay, so now we did our 52 straight, our one large corner, our one straight uh, uh, straight section, then our um, one medium corner uh, to the left, and now we're going to do 51 straight pieces here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, and 51. If you haven't learned your numbers yet, you will today. So now, two right-hand large corners, one and two. 
Now we're going to go six pieces with the lift tool. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so that is our first inflection point, as you can see right here, where we are going to transition into the brake, and we're going to set this at 22. I mentioned earlier the lift tool was 22 up. That's why I've set the brakes at 22 down. If you want a different speed, by all means do it. It's track length. It's not speed based. So this track length is approximately the same length as all these helices. Okay, so on the brakes, we're going to do 46 of these guys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, and 46. Now, we need to go up under here and change this to Steel Wild Mouse because we need a tight corner. Small corner. As you can see where it disappears here, small corner. Now we'll go back to straight and we will go back to, huh, a mistake. That's what we need to go back to. So you will see that I had a chain lift installed on all of these brake pieces. Make sure we don't do that. You will need to disable your chain. There we go. Now let's go back, let's do these breaks. And 46 once again. And 20. Thirty. Forty. One, two, three, four, five, six. Done. Okay. So it should pretty much line up with this curve here. Assuming we're doing that correctly. Okay, back to Steel Wild Mouse so we can do this little tight corner here. We will do. And as soon as we've done the small corner, we're going to do six more break pieces. You can keep it in the Wild Mouse. It doesn't really matter. Make sure we're still at 22. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now we're going to do one more small corner. Done. Okay. So there is our six. And now we are going to continue in this direction. Uh, we're going to do eight more of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's all the down we have for this section. So now we're going to transition back to the lift hill. And we can go ahead and transition back to the mini coaster just to... Guys. Okay, so we did our eight straight sections. So now we have 34 straight sections. Uh, let's make sure we're back to just the lift hill. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. Okay, now we have this little bit here where we have two little speed bumps. Lift hill still engaged. We're going to go slope up one level, down level. That's speed bump one. And uh, you'll notice it turned off the lift hill on these. You can leave it on or not. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I think on these, I have it on still. So for consistency's sake, we'll keep it on. But you don't need it. We're going to do one more hump here. So there are two humps done. Now we're going to do two more straight pieces. One, two. And now we will do two more large corners. One and two with the lift hills turned on. Now we'll do two more straight bits. One and two. That's inflection point number two. Okay, so let's go back to brakes. Turn off that lift hill. 22 miles per hour. And so now we've done two straight. So now we're going to go for uh, 51 straight pieces. Uh, so this is going to take us out just beyond where we were before. So... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, and 51. And we're going to go back to the small corner, so let's get our Steel Wild Mouse going on. Turn that tight corner. Right there. And now we're going to go for six more breaks at 22. 
One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, let's turn the corner again. Now the next one here is a straight track with no brakes and no lift hill because we're crossing this one and we don't want them to merge. That's why we're not using the brakes. But now we're right back onto the brakes and let's transition back from Steel Wild Mouse to Mini Roller Coaster. And here we are. So once again, we're back onto the brakes and we're going to do 43 of these guys. One, oh, back onto the brakes, I said. 43. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine, forty, forty one, forty two, forty three. Okay. Now we'll do an S bend to the left. Again, all these weird bits down here are just to make sure that the thing will finish at the same spot that it started. S bend left. Two brakes. S bend right. Now we'll go back to the brakes again. We have eight more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're going to turn the corner with a uh, medium turn to the right, which is right here. And let's do that right now. Kind of see where we are all up under here oh, and see how it's lining up just another check to make sure that we've got it correctly done. Okay, we've done our medium turn to the right. Okay, so the next step here, you can see there's a gap. So what is the gap? So the gap is actually a miniature golf hole. Um, and why miniature golf? Uh, because miniature golf gets us a just short enough little bit of movement it's you know worth point you know one something to move the train just a little bit further so essentially if you're doing this yourself this is a really good trick to get things to line up right sort it out where it's just a little bit too short of your final goal and then build two straight pieces somewhere down there and build a miniature golf hole basically to add in just that little bit of extra space uh, so we're going to add um, our uh, hole A. Actually, all the holes, from what I'm told, don't really matter. So we're going to go with hole A. And now, just to make it difficult, we're going to go back to the mini coaster and put in a brake piece at 22. The reason I'm not doing mini mul multiple miniature golf holes in a row is so that we can still maintain those brake pieces on the way down. Now I'll go back to mini golf and we're going to put in another hole A. And now I'll go back to mini coaster. We're almost there. We'll get a medium corner here. And then you can see we've got one more straight bit. 22, another medium corner. And then we have uh, two that are uh, just straight pieces. Uh, you can put brakes on them or not, doesn't matter. Uh, mini golf again. We're going to do our last hole A. Back to the mini roller coaster. And now we're going to go back to the brakes once again. Two more. Now, again, just to make sure that we don't merge here, we're going to put a banked and an unbanked track in here, which uh, have just a little bit of an effect. And then more brakes at 22. And we're just going to put one in there. And we're going to put four at 13. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to put two at nine, which is just going to ensure an easy, smooth approach into the station. All right. So there is your super convoluted, super messy uh, track down below. Uh, again, you can come up with what you want to do for that space. As assuming you have less space to work with, you can make that thing ultra compact. Uh, this is just what I derived as I was messing around with this thing just to get the right angle uh, or just to get the right lineup. So this is a great way if you have a lot of space and you don't really want to fiddle around with it, just follow this exactly and it'll work out just fine. Um, okay, so last little bit here is we've got to connect in our lower portion. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flat and then a straight piece here, which is a break. Uh, at 13 to merge in. 
Oop, here we are. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, flatten, and a break to merge in at 13. So now we are done. Let's test this out at 18. And what I'm going to do is actually shut this down. Then it will stop where we want it to stop, and we can see where things are landing. If you're with me so far, good job. You got through all the hard parts. Now we just got to make sure that it lines up exactly. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do with this is I'm going to go through and make a couple of these station pieces invisible. So we can go open this one up, collect the paint, and say no entrances to make those go away. That's easy enough. And we can also go through and I get our tile inspector here and just make a couple of these pieces here invisible. We're looking for the ones that are at 18. To ensure it adds up all right so you can see there's a little bit of a gap here so this is just a spacing issue um, you can do the spacing with a program called Visual Studio I just don't know it and this is an easy way uh, if you don't know how to use that um, to do it so the way that I like to test this and this is how I did all my testing is I get a piece of scenery uh, in this case we're going to use the tall corner um, base fence here and we're going to paint it something real obvious let's paint a bright red and I am going to set this right here. We're turning on our scenery again. You can see this is the first car on the road, uh, which I think is actually like car 11 or something. Um, you can kind of see where it's sitting in relation to this. If you look real close, you can even figure out the exact kind of pixel that it's on. So that's what we want it to stop right up against once we're done. Okay, so we're at 22 speed. So let's go ahead and test this. Let's go down below and take a look at what we have. So this is kind of doing its thing down here and making sure that it's following along. So here we can kind of zoom out so we can see the whole thing. So this first lift is our longest lift section all at once here. And that first inflection point was down around here somewhere. Once we get there, we should see this guy up at the top. I usually add, I think I added an extra chain or two in there just to get it going in the right direction, just so that once it got off, it wouldn't uh, give us any surprises. So now we're on the way down. We're using the brake down there to make sure that we keep it at the right speed so it stays consistent on the way down. Going through those invisible pieces, even though they don't show up, they're still there. That's one of the beauties of OpenRCT, it lets you do that without an issue. Over those little humps turn around and now we're back on our way down so this is the final return run this is a huge section of brakes just to make sure that we get this whole thing back home going through those s bends here we're going to go through those mini golf holes. It's going to teleport through those, but it actually does move a distance when it goes through those. Let's close this up. So we can take a look. And now we're going to slow down and ease it into the station here as we pull around and park at our location once again. So if you zoom in, you can see with our red pole, we are right around where we need to go. If you let this run for an hour, you'll start to see some of this move. It does move. In my opinion, it moves at an acceptable level so that you know, if I got to reset it every once in a while, I can do it. It's not a hard thing. In order to reset this, there's literally nothing to it. We're going to go ahead and take our ride here. Uh, and we got the right one. Mr. One, just shut it down, test it up, close it, let it go. So it's going to go through all of its thing. going to do it split. And then it's going to set up right where it needs to be every single time. Okay, so as far as uh, invisibility goes, we're going to take our, uh, oop, fast. We're going to take up here and we're going to turn this one to circus um, just to get rid of that. 
This guy can go to Circus or Crooked House or any one of these fun ones. So that's done. Uh, the rest of this we would make invisible via uh, Tile Inspector just to get rid of that and not have any elevation changes. And then down here we can just leave if we want. If you want to make it invisible, then go ahead. Um, that is fine. So let's uh, go back to this one and get rid of this. Get rid of this. And there you go. So there you have it. This is the Starflyer hack. Again, this one's a little more complicated, and we're going to get into more of these because we want to do some interesting custom rides uh, like this. So we're going to have some fun stuff. Um, we're also going to throw in another variable here where we're going to back up on a couple of future ones in addition to going forward uh, while changing directions down there. So that underground track can get a whole lot more complicated. But if you stuck it out through this uh, this whole tutorial at the 50 minute mark now, congratulations and thank you for watching to this point. If you have trouble with this one, and I understand if you do just because it's a lot, make sure you go back through and, and uh, just check your numbers, make sure everything looks right and then try it again and just make sure it all lines up because generally a lot of these are going to line up with each other um, if you still have problems after that feel free to send me a note i'll be happy to take a look at your hack see what's going on and make sure that it's operating like it ought to be um, but hopefully this does work for you and you can make a pretty cool custom ride for your scenario that is peepable and um, has a little bit more than the base game uh, has to offer so until next time, thank you very much for watching uh, this hacking tutorial. Uh, I will see you in the next one with any suggestions. Feel free to let me know, um, and I will add them to the list. I've got a nice little backlog here going already. Got some really interesting stuff that I'm pretty excited to show you guys. Um, so definitely stay tuned for more. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.